one of the things that's gotten my attention about the work at Kresge and, and the focus on building on local assets and arts and cultural assets uh, specifically as, as part of this strategy is that it takes a posture that everyone has something to deliver, that people um, have the obligation and capacity to help create the places where they live and that through their own creativity and aesthetic expression, uh, it's, an important, it's an important form of civic engagement, really. Uh, and that's always gotten uh, my attention. As you see the creative placemaking field growing, and there are more and more uh, examples of it around the country for, for lots of reasons, what gives you confidence that, that this is the right, the right investment, this is the right thing to support? I was trying to prepare for a, a talk I had to give in Minneapolis um, a number of weeks back um, about the role of historic theaters. And so the historic theater community wanted me to talk about how important it was to sort of have these anchors of a community be almost acupuncture points that radiated out energy into the community. And I, as I pushed the audience a little bit, I said, it's fine to have a physical structure always drive that, but think of all of the different ways that arts and cultural activity push a community's conversation in different directions. And we just sort of canvassed around the room and we came up with um, examples from the performing arts, examples from the visual arts, examples from sort of classic community organizing, things that weren't always sort of rooted in the sort of the, the bricks and the mortar of what the theater community sort of had in mind. And I think one of the things that makes me have much more confidence that this is a construct that is actually there and simply hasn't been fully appreciated and fully captured is the extraordinary variety of community experience that we're seeing that plays this out.